Okay, well, I'm David and I'm here because you broke something. So today what we're going to work on is this 2008 Honda Odyssey minivan. And if you have these minivans and you've been using them for a while, you may have run into this problem, especially if you use these rear sliding doors. Ever have this happen when you pull the door and it works perfectly? Well, sometimes we have that happen, but more times than not, what happens is that, where we have that clunky sound and then... You know, you're just trying to get this thing to shut, and then finally it goes. Well, let's see if it'll hang up on the opening uh, as well. This happens all the time. The kids come up to this, they pull it, and most of the time it does that. Uh, most of the time it does that, it will work okay, but then there's that time where it's either particularly cold or particularly hot and things get hung up. So we're going to work on that today and get to the heart of the problem without having to go to the dealership. The first thing that we're going to do is go uh, into the inside of the vehicle. We're going to pull out the seats and give us some room to work. Then we're going to pull off the door handle, the door panel, and then get right to the door latch actuator mechanism. And that's the heart of the problem. Okay, so the first step is once the door is open, we're going to take out the seat. And we're going to do that on both sides to give us plenty of room. Somewhere in here there's a latch. Where is that thing? Oh, there it is. Okay, right in here there's a latch that allows you to pull up that front seat. It tilts forward. I suppose what it's easier to do first is just lift this handle, collapse it. You might want to put the headrest down and you pull this handle right here. Tilt it forward. Wiggle it a little bit. wiggle it a little bit more, then lift it out. And then you can pull it out. And the nice thing about this is once you have it out, you can see everything that was under the seat. So you'll find those missing Legos and all kinds of toys that were under there. So you just set this to the side. Always have wipes. Okay, now that I've practiced on the uh, driver's side, I'm going to take out the passenger side seat and I'm going to do it all in one shot, hopefully, so that uh, you can see that I've actually learned something. So here, fold this forward, go down here and pull the little lever, lift it up, then come back like this, and then lift the seat out. And remember to lift with your knees, not with your back, especially if you're as old as I am and then maybe turn the seat so it gets out of the door. And look, look what we found. We found the new umbrella and a Rubik's Cube. How long has that been missing? All right, so the first thing you do once you're at this stage is close the door. It works. All right, so when you got the door closed, we're gonna pull up this handle here. And one of the things that you want to do is try to get your uh, door puller tool, which you may have, or a screwdriver. And also get some blue tape or, or any kind of masking tape to protect the plastic here because we're going to be scraping in this area. And if it's your car and you don't mind scraping things, that's fine. If it's a customer's car, you may want to be double, double sure that you protect all of this stuff so that they... They don't say, well, thanks for fixing my car, but you now you've caused me all kinds of other, other damage. So it's nice to protect this area all the way around. You, you work the tape into the area and be sure to get behind the door handle like this as well. So that whole, whole area is, is masked. Now, what I found just in a little bit of practice is that it's a little bit easier to open the door slightly so that you're, you can see in this area and in this area to get the either the tool or your screwdriver in there so i'm going to open up the door i've shut the automatic door uh, switch on the dash i've turned that off so that i can open up this door without it trying to automatically do its thing so i can open it up get it to about that position there and then i can work my way around so i can see the clip that holds this this uh doorknob on or door handle on now one thing that I did notice is that there was quite a bit of lint in there 
from uh, from the past six years and you might have that as well so you might not be seeing the clip as if it came off the factory floor so just blow that out with your your mouth or with some canned air so that you can see the actual clip and what we're going to do is we're first going to try this tool which was a tool I got quite several years ago Let's see if we can push that clip down with it and don't think I was successful. Let's see. I think I heard something there. Might have gotten one side. And then you have to get the other side. I definitely got one side of it down. Well, maybe now I take the screwdriver and get in there and take it the rest of the way off. Nope, well, that didn't do it. Oh, I see it. There it is. There we go. So there's the clip. We'll get a close-up of it there. You see that clip there? That's what holds that doorknob on. So set that aside. We don't want to lose that clip because that's really important. And we can take the door handle off. And then if you want, you can probably just store that together. Just put it back in there so that it, uh, it doesn't get lost. Now the good news is, is when we put this back together, we install the clip and there's a nice chamfer on this and all you have to do is push it on until it snaps. So the hardest part is pretty much now over. Okay, so we've got the door uh, door handle off and now let's pull this this panel off. Now it really is just a matter of giving it some yanks to get it started and then being very careful because it is plastic and depending on the temperature at which you're doing this, I'm doing this on a nice warm day so the plastic is pretty pliable I know that if it's really cold outside, say you're at uh, the 30 degree, 40 degree range, the plastic gets a little bit stiffer and you can cause some cracks, especially if it's been out in the sun for a long time, depending on your climate. So what I did uh, is I just grabbed a cup holder here and give it a nice yank straight out like this. So give it a nice yank and then you get the, the panel started. And now you can start looking at seeing all of the locations where the little clips are that hold this in and you work your your way around the whole panel now I will have to get to this point right here which is where the switch is for the window and this this little piece has a clip back here that we have to lift up I'm hoping because I don't want to put a screwdriver in here and cause any damage that we'll see later I'm hoping that once I have the panel off a little bit I can push this up from the inside or from the back side of the panel and remove this and pull it away so let's go around the panel and get this thing off and I think up here I'm going to have to remove this trim piece at least pull it away here so that I can lift the door panel out normally the way these things work is the door panel comes in sits down into some clips and then goes and then gets pushed shut but this is the first time I've taken this apart so we'll see how Honda does it Yep, that's. looks like I'm going to have to pull this up because everything around here, there's one, two, three, four little clips that plug into the door here. They're all removed. I can see back here that there's one, two, three all along the base and they have been, been done. And I'm going to go off the camera here. We'll pull that around and we'll see the other clips that are on the, the back side of the door. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone to the outside of the vehicle and sure enough, it's a little bit tricky, but there's right at this, this line here, there's a fastener in the back end too. And if you, your first inclination is to rip, pull this down here and like rip this out in the back, 
But go ahead and if you don't have a tool like this, this is a Craftsman 45498. I think it's probably called a gasket scraper or something like that. But it comes in really handy to get in to locations like this and pry out. And you really want to do this in the back because if you split that plastic, uh, then it'll look bad and it detracts from the resale of the car. Everybody who's a dealer will know that what's been done to the vehicle and they will know that it hasn't been done right. So go ahead and get one of these tools or get something similar. A chisel, a, a really fine chisel might work. Also protect the paint in the back. But I've gone around all the, all the way around the door and I've released all those little plastic clips. Now I have to release these pieces here and then lift the door panel up and out. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, I noticed that it's a little bit stuck right down in here, so I'm going to have to pry this out. You, you can get, after doing this for a while, you can get a feel of where things aren't moving, and things aren't moving right here. So I'm going to take this uh, apart right now. I'm just going to lay down some tape and be very careful because this is a final trim piece, and, it, and messing this up hurts the value of the vehicle. So there, I pop that up, you slide that back, and then you pull this little connector out here like this. They make all these things so fancy now. But there's gotta be a way to disconnect that plug. All the guys that know how to do this are probably laughing at me right now. Oh, just a little pry of the screwdriver. So just a little pry of the screwdriver and you have your plug out. Now you can see if there's any more things holding the door panel, I see something holding it in here. There must be a clip or something there. Oh, here it is. There we go. there you have it, the door panel is out, unscathed and not damaged. Now there's quite a bit of insulation on the back side of the door panel, which is kind of nice, that's why the van is really nice and quiet. And you have this vapor barrier here that protects the door, and this keeps this makes sure that any moisture that's on the outside of the vehicle or falls down from the window doesn't penetrate the vehicle and get it damp. So what we're going to do is be very careful, we're going to peel this back to expose this area down here, to expose this area down here that has the door latch actuator mechanism.
Now be very careful. This little, this rubbery stuff, it's not like an RTV silicone. It's it used to be called Dum Dum. I don't know if it's still called that. It's a tarry, sticky, gooey, gooey uh, elastomer. So you just be very careful pulling this out, not to tear it. And if your fingers are dirty, clean them first so that you don't get the the material um, greasy because you do want it to stick back when you're all done. You want it to work as a seal so that you don't damage anything. So here we here we have that and we'll pull that back and you can just really can't stick it to itself so take a piece of your blue tape tape it out of the way just like that now we're gonna work on this thing right and you as you can tell this piece of plastic is not very sticky it's like it's made out of uh, Teflon or something so get yourself a long piece of tape and tape it up to the metal up here and then you'll be good all right so we're gonna take this piece off right here which is the uh, door latch actuator mechanism. Okay, so what we're, the way you remove this uh, is to first disconnect the electrical connection. There's a little tang in the back here. You pinch that with your finger and then slide this away. And then there's three screws, one here, one here, one here. We disconnect those or remove those and then remove the spring. Or Maybe we should remove the spring first so that we don't have something loose and then a dangly spring that can get lost in the door. So you just lift up on the spring with your finger like that, pull that away, and then put that aside. Maybe put it inside your little tape ring over there. And then disconnect the mechanism with these three screws. One. two, three, and that's it. That is the door latch actuator mechanism. Now, from the other videos that I've seen on this, and from what I've read on all of the boards, nothing really goes bad in this. All the gears are the proper um, material, none of the teeth break, nothing happens other than the motor, which is connected to the connection right here, that's your, the, the motor uh, voltage goes in there, current. There's a, little, there's a little miniature motor and a little worm gear right here that drives the gears that are inside. And it seems like the, the motor is what goes wrong. Now, these parts you can get online at different places from any range from uh, $32 up to maybe $45. They're not very expensive, but if you're replacing both of them um, at the same time, it could be a little pricey. It might be outside your budget. So what we're going to do here today is I'm going to take this motor out and see if we can just lubricate it or find out what's wrong with the motor. If it's a serious problem like uh, there's the brushes in the motor have worn out and filled up the commutator with, uh, with a bunch of gunk, well, maybe that's a repair that's best left to a professional and you just buy the new part. But if it's, a, some, if it's something as simple as lubrication uh, that's causing the problem, well, let's just open it up and re-lubricate it, put it back together and get another, another three years out of it. And uh, take that money and go take the dinner out for dinner, or take the family out for dinner. So let's go pull this apart out uh, on the bench and see, see what we can fix. Okay, so I'm here on my workbench and I've, I've pulled it out of the vehicle. There's one school, uh, screw right here that uh, holds the cover on. And you, you take that out and then I've already pulled this apart off camera. But what I found is that if you can get into where the electrical connector is right here, get into that corner and give a little pry with a screwdriver, it starts, um, it, it starts to open up the case. And you work your way around the case along the edge very slowly and then you can take the top off and I, I recommend doing it doing this in the fashion that this uh, this lever right here is facing down 
That way the lid comes off and none of the gears fall out. And then if the gears fall out, you may not know how to put it back together. So here's what's inside this thing. Some uh, plastic or nylon gears that uh, rotate uh, and then move this, move this lever up and down. And then you have the worm gear attached to this little DC motor. Now to pull out the motor and, you, and give it a spin, you can go in at this edge here or pry just slightly up at this edge here just so you can get your, get your fingers on it. If you give it a little pry here, this end will come up. And there's two brass uh, connectors that, that go into the connector where the electrical plug plugs in. They continue inside. There's a little capacitor or something there to eliminate motor noise uh, bridging those things. That's a pretty fragile component. You don't want to break it, but I don't think it's the end of the world if you do. Um, you can pry up the motor at this point just like that and leave those connectors in there because they fit into little um, little grooves in the motor here. Now I took this one out and I spun the motor and it spins very freely and I hooked it up to the door just uh, I took the connectors out of here and hooked it up into the door and it worked fine the motor sounded good. I am gonna add a little bit of lubrication there Maybe it's just a little bit dry uh, inside. I pulled apart all of these gears. All of them have, look perfect, just like um, they should. Everything spins freely. Um, one thing I did notice was there's a little spring in here. Uh, in this little piece right, let me pull this up and out. In this little piece right here, there's a, a little spring that looks like it could use a little bit of lubrication. It binds just a little bit, but everything else in here looks brand new. It looks great. So I don't think uh, I'm going to do anything drastic to this at all. I'm just going to do a little bit of lubrication here and here, put a little grease back into this onto this wheel because this was fairly dry and it could be as simple as that um, that it wasn't getting enough rpm because of just a little bit of drag uh, these things run on a timer in in the uh, door so when you open up the door whether something's connected or not this motor only runs for a little bit so if there's a little bit of drag excess drag in the system and it doesn't do its thing within a time limit uh, that's what causes the hang up so you could say that's a little poorly designed. There's no, there's no uh, limit switch or something on this little lever that moves to then indicate that the door should move on to the next step. They, they rely on this motor working perfectly every time for many years. So I'm just gonna do a quick lubrication and put it back together. Okay, so uh, what I've done is I've taken the, uh, and we have a bee hanging around, so that might come into the uh, frame. It's a nice looking bee anyway. And it's appropriate, you know, I'm wearing the, the yellow jacket hat, so I guess he's coming home. Um, so what I've done is I looked at the motor and I connected it to the electrical connection uh, outside of, of this little box. And everything looked good, the motor sounded good. One thing that I did do was I sprayed some um, silicone lubricant through it and then blew it out. Um, because the silicone really won't affect the electrical connections and uh, and the motor will work fine with that and a little bit of, of light lubricant in the motor especially since it's basically free uh, and our only next option if it doesn't work is to buy the part which we would have done anyway uh, and it's only a thirty dollar part, part like I said before uh, so I sprayed that through there loosened up the motor uh, sounds fine and also when I put it back in, I put my three screws in, my spring back on, the uh, electrical connection on, and then I sprayed this linkage right here, which has a bunch of springs uh, and where all of the different cables come into this area. I've, I've redone, or, or I've sprayed all of that with a little bit of silicone to give a light lubrication to that, just so we wanna make sure that um, even if the motor was a little weak, it maybe if this was also a little tight the combination of the two would cause a problem so off camera i have double checked this and i can tell you right away that it sounds like it's brand new uh you don't hear any of that laboring that uh 
we had before. Everything sounds fine. Um, so I'm going to button this up and reverse the procedure of taking it apart to put it back together and then I'm going to work on the other door. Alright, so I've buttoned everything up on the inside. Everything went together just great. Looks like it's factory brand new and even better yet, you can pull the handle, it opens up and you can pull the handle again and it closes. And I can tell right now that that lubrication, uh, the motor is much quicker and it sounds just like new. It goes and then and then immediately releases. So I hope that helps you out and saves you some money in the future. And you can go out and take the family out on a uh, out for dinner or something like that. Till next time.